Here's a chart that shows something puzzling. You might think that a proton has the same mass no matter where it is. But that's not the case. A proton inside hydrogen 1 has an average mass of this. But a proton inside iron 58 has a smaller average mass. Why is that? How could a proton have less mass simply because it's in an iron atom when everything else about the proton is identical? To answer this question, we're going to use Einstein's famous equation E equals mc squared. We've already learned that when protons and neutrons come together to form a nucleus, they emit light. And when they emit that light, they lose mass. Why? Because energy and mass are equivalent. Energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. So when this photon carries away some energy, it also carries away some mass. You might think that this process should be the same no matter how big the nucleus is. So that if these protons and neutrons release three, then so will these, and so will these. But that's not quite correct. This one is slightly bigger than this nucleus, and because it's bigger, those nucleons release more energy. This nucleus is slightly bigger than that, and that, so these protons and neutrons release even more energy. Let's plot this trend. What should it look like? The bigger the nucleus, the more energy each nucleon emits. Here's that graph, and it shows just what we expected. When we go to the right, the nucleus gets bigger. And what happens? As we move to the right, the energy released per nucleon increases. The y-axis goes up. Okay, so now we understand what the trend is, but we haven't learned where it comes from. Imagine that there are three tables sitting side by side, and we're viewing them from above. We place magnets on these tables, increasing in size. Then we take identical nails and put them down on the tables. Try to guess which nail has the most potential energy. It's this one, because it feels the biggest force. And this has the least potential energy because it feels the smallest force. Bigger forces produce more potential energy. And this connection makes sense, because a bigger force has more potential to speed up the nail. It turns out that nuclei are the exact same. Let's take three nuclei, small, medium, and big. And we're going to place some nails nearby. Wait, these aren't nails. These are protons on the top. And they're not attracted by the magnetic force. They're attracted by the nuclear force. The smaller the nucleus, the weaker the nuclear force. And the bigger the nucleus, the bigger the nuclear force. Because this force is the sum of all of these little nucleons pulling on this guy. Which of these three protons has the most potential energy? It's this one, because it feels the biggest force of attraction. Let's make up some numbers and say it has 7 mega electron volts, and this one has 3 MeV. When this proton joins this nucleus, the proton loses some mass and emits a photon. But where did the 3 MeV go? Energy can't just disappear. That energy is given to the photon. When this joins the nucleus, it loses even more potential energy, and therefore it loses even more mass. The same thing is true for every one of these protons and neutrons. When this nucleus formed, they all felt giant attraction, so they had a lot of potential energy to lose, so they all lost even more mass. You might think that if we take a giant, massive nucleus and we put a proton nearby, then it acts like a giant, massive magnet, which exerts a giant, massive force. But that's not quite right. Remember that the nuclear force is short range. It only acts over short distances. So many of these protons and neutrons are too far away to pull with attraction on this proton. But it gets even worse than that. Protons are positively charged, and many of these nucleons are going to be protons as well. So instead of attracting, because they're too far for that, 
the electric repulsion kicks in and they push this proton away, reducing the net force. And so by comparison, this is actually a smaller magnet than we would expect. So, when we compare a medium nucleus with a giant, huge nucleus, we realize the medium nucleus is a larger magnet, so to speak. Each of these protons and neutrons lost 7 MeV of potential energy, whereas over here, they only lost 6 MeV of potential energy. And the reason is because this nucleus is so big that the long-range electric repulsion begins to dominate the short-range nuclear attraction. And this explains why we see two trends in the energy graph. As the nucleus gets bigger and bigger, what does the graph do? It goes up, so the magnet gets stronger, and then it starts to decrease, because those nucleons begin to lose less and less energy as they bind to that nucleus.